Hello, my name is Hai Bin Jiang, Strategic Marketing Director at Electro Scientific Industries, a part of MKS Instruments family. Today, let's spend some time and talk about some of the challenges and new opportunities in the PCB manufacturing industry. Now, before we deep dive into the technology aspect of the topic, let's think about some of the macro market trends that's driving the new need for the PCB manufacturing. Deep down, if you look at today's economy, a lot of the new applications and new services are driven by data. If we look back 10 years from today, the most valuable companies on the marketplace are mostly oil companies. And now if you fast forward to today, curious, curiously, most of the valuable companies are driven by data. Think about Facebook, Microsoft, and Google. They're all in the business of collecting, analyzing, transmitting data from one point to another. Intuitively then, the faster we can transmit data from one point to another, the better for the economy. And that is why a lot of new applications and new technologies are emerging to help us realize this data economy. For example, we have the new 5G revolution coming our way in the communication sector. For Internet of Things, people are trying to connect data within devices, amongst devices, or with people. Automotive cars, uh, autonomous driving, are using data so that the automobiles themselves can realize the surrounding conditions and drive people around with little to no intervention from humans. The AR, VR devices use data to give people an all new perspective of re reality in our work, study, or entertainment. Now, the PCB industry is trying to figure out ways to support the data revolution in the marketplace. And they are trying to introduce new materials and tighter designing rules to support the, all the new applications like 5G, IoT, Smart Mobile, and AR, VR. So why do we need new materials in the PCB manufacturing? Simply put, it comes down to performance and capability. Now, the 5G revolution that you heard a lot about um, in the news is actually a perfect example to illustrate this. Now, when we change our communication protocols from 4G LTE to 5G, people are generally investing for a performance improvement at least 10 times. Right? We're targeting an order of magnitude improvement in efficiencies. Now, when we talk about the details of efficiencies in terms of latency, which is basically the delay you would transfer your data from one point to another, we're thinking about the new 5G communication providing less than one millisecond delay versus the standard 10 millisecond of the current 4G LTE. In, in terms of the data transfer rate, right, we're trying to improve from one gigabit per second all the way to tens of gigabit per second. So you can download your music or movies 10 times faster. Now, to drive those changes in the marketplace, the fundamental transmitting technology also needs to evolve. Now, we're have, we have to change the carrier frequency, basically the frequency of the signal that carries the data, from about 1 gigahertz all the way up to 28 to 80 gigahertz. Now, the challenge is, a lot of these materials that were currently used in the PCB industry would respond very differently at high frequency. To design a high-performance PCB board for applications uh, in the data area, you would want to design your board to have low insertion loss and low delay between the transmission from point A to point B. Now, the insertion loss is generally related to the metal and the dielectric of your PCB board. Uh, the metal side of things is related to the frequency of the carrier and the surface roughness of your metal foils. Now, when it comes to a dielectric material, two basic parameters of the material become very important. One of them is DK, which is basically the dielectric constant of the material. The other one is what we call DF, uh, dissipation factor of the material, which directly relates to the material uh, the signal loss. When it comes to delay, the majority of the delay is related to the dielectric constant of the material. 
In other words, for us to design a high speed, low latency, low loss circuit, we want these two values, dk and df, of your dielectric material to be as low as possible. Lower is better in this case. Now, if we come to this chart that we call the less the better chart, the traditional materials like the polyimid for flexible circuits, the FR4 for the rigid circuit, sits on the top right, right. They have relatively high decay and relatively high loss. But why do people move from the traditional material set to the newer material set despite the increased cost? One of the main reasons is that they offer lower DK and lower DF compared to the traditional means of manufacturing. And the higher the frequency, the carrier frequency we use, the bigger the performance improvement is. And that's why materials like liquid crystal polymer, short for the LCP, and PTFE, commonly known as the Teflon material, are commonly used for 5G-based uh, circuit boards, no matter they are flexible circuits or rigid circuits. One of the key applications in the PCB manufacturing industry is to drill small via holes that connects the multi-layer of circuitry for multi-layer multi structure with a laser system. Now that will require a very good laser coupling between the laser source itself and different base materials in your PCB stack. Now when we talk about PCBs, they're generally flexible PCBs or rigid PCBs. For the flexible ones, the base materials generally include a flexible dielectric, polyimid, for example, a sheet of copper, and adhesive materials that bond them together. Now, going forward with this 5G revolution, or high-speed data transfer, we're introducing materials like the LCP, for example. Now, if you think about the coupling of laser sources to these materials, the UV lasers, around 350 nanometers, are much better absorbed by this material system compared to a CO2 system. And that is why in the machining or manufacturing of flexible circuits, UV laser systems are mostly used. But when you look at the more rigid side of the circuits, um, like a rigid board, the material system is a little more complicated. It generally includes some kind of resin, a glass system, like a glass cloth, to support the structure, the rigidity of the PCB board, copper to conduct electricity, and also adhesive films to put things together. Now, as we talked about, the newer generation PCB boards can have materials like PTFE in the mix. And in general, CO2 lasers are better absorbed by this laser system, and that's why you see a lot of CO2 systems being used in the marketplace. However, when we are trying to design and manufacture new generation PCB boards, so to speak, there are actually added caveats when you're trying to select your laser systems. For example, a lot of the adhesive sheets are less known to the laser manufacturers or the PCB manufacturers. They might have properties that's not understood well, and that would add a complexity when you're trying to select a laser wavelength. It might be confusing, and sometimes even intimidating, for an engineer who is familiar with the PCB manufacturing process to select the right laser systems. But don't be. If you have an application that requires PCB machining, either flexible or rigid PCB boards, and better yet, has requirements for the new materials emerging in the marketplace, like the LCP or PTFE. Please contact us and let our experts in laser material interaction and precision machining help you commercialize your technology with shortest amount of time and highest quality. With that, thank you very much for your time. Please connect with us for any of your PCB manufacturing needs with respect to laser machining systems. Cheers. <laughs>